Hi everybody. A few people have been asking me what I've been doing lately. And uh, as usual I've been working on PWMs. This one is a... Um, primarily it was designed as a HHO controller. But I also put in the features for it to be a, a motor controller as well. I really wanted to put something together that was really low cost. I mean I know a lot of HHO people don't really or don't really want to spend big money on controllers. So I designed this to be reasonably cheap. Um, this is a prototype board. You can see it's I'm not sure you can see it, but it's got burnt tracks and uh, jumpers everywhere. Yeah, I'll probably make a few changes from the final. I think at the moment I'll probably put a different capacitor on there. Um, yeah, a couple of other changes as well. I'd really like to have the heatsink mounted on the board too, just to make it an all-in-one unit so it's convenient for users. It's uh, 12 to 48 volts input and 12 to 48 volts output. You put 48 volts in, you'll get 48 volts out. You won't get 45 or 46, you'll get 100% PWM speed control. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. It's got a uh, soft start, so when you first power it on, it will build up to the speed you, you want. Uh, it's also got adjustment soft start, so as you adjust it, it'll slowly ramp up to the speed you want as you change it. The customer asked for that and I thought, well, why not? Easy enough to put in. It'll do 100 amp continuous. It's frequency adjustable up to 1 kilohertz. Um, I think it's probably between 250 hertz and 1 kilohertz. A lot of people want really low frequency stuff for HHO controllers. Not really sure why. I can't see that there'd be a, a lot of difference you know, on the, on the frequency side of things, but um, ah, whatever makes people happy. It uses dedicated MOSFET drivers, which means the MOSFETs will generate less heat because they'll spend less time in their linear regions. Anyway, I also chucked in an on-off switch, which at the moment has just got a bit of a link there so I can play with it. But uh, when I finish it, it'll be yeah, nice switch and everything like that. Um, the frequency is adjustable on the front of the board. Not sure if you can see it. That one there is the current limiter. That one there is the frequency. And uh, I'll set it up so you can have a look at it. Uh, we'll use this DeWalt hammer drill motor. They're a um, 18 volt unit and they suck a lot of current. It's probably not the best condition motor because I've been testing with it and uh, I've been stalling it a lot to ramp up the current. But you get that. For this board, actually I'll show you something really interesting about uh, MOSFET parallel. Basically, when the when I had the board made, they joined a track that was meant to be separate from the rest. So instead of the MOSFETs all sharing the load equally, the first MOSFET, because you've got your negative here, um, your negative inputs are these two. It's basically coming up here, straight to here, because there's no track cutouts. So what's happened is the signal's going straight to this MOSFET because it's the shortest path and straight to the motor. So this is probably doing 90%. Um, maybe, no, no, that's probably doing 80%. That's probably doing 10%. That's probably doing 5%. And that one, I'm not even sure what that one's doing. But uh, it'll be fixed in the production version. You know, I, I wasn't so upset with it because it's a prototype. I basically just get got this made so I can test. I used to build on breadboards but um, just too many mistakes, too many problems and I was going through breadboards like there was no tomorrow. 
This is uh, one of my previous controllers. Uh, you can see I I burn it out here. I burn it out over here, 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 here. And uh, after you burn them out, they sort of lose reliability. So uh, I've got a few breadboards sitting around the place that I I just stop using them. I suppose I could make my own boards, but um, it's harder to make double-sided boards. But yeah. All right, let's power this sucker up and uh, see how it goes. First thing I'll do is turn it off, turn it right down, and switch the current limiter right up. Oh, actually, I'll switch it right down. Power on. Put our jumper in there, which is our on off switch. Okay, we've got nothing, so I'll turn the current limiter up. Basically, the current limiter will work from nothing all the way up to, I think, 105 amps. So turn it up a little bit. Oh. And we'll lose control. Awesome. Um, I may fix. All right, take two. There's really a lot of arcing going on with this motor. But, uh, yeah, this mode is not in the best condition, and, you know, whacking up like that probably didn't help. You can hear the crack on. Plus, I've been shorting the motor out a lot. Alright, now, what I'll do, set the current limiter back to zero, put the duty cycle to 100%, and uh, we'll turn the current up. So you can see the current limiter in action. This mode is kicking out a fair bit of grunt. Now we're actually burning the wires out. We've got so much current running through it, which is pretty cool. Let's just turn it on to uh, cool it down. Pretty weak, pretty quick way to kill a motor. Oh well, these things happen. All right, um, I've showed you the motor. Now I'll show you my. Ouch! Awesome. Believe it or not, I built this myself. I'm sure, you probably realise that. Okay. This power supply only goes up to 32 volts and uh, I think it puts out a maximum of 31 amps. I peak it all the time. I usually would use batteries for this, but um, because I've been testing all these different controllers, the batteries are dead. Now I just have to uh, make sure this sits off the table because this basically works like a heater. It'll sit there and it'll burn the table. You can see all these little burn marks here. Now, I'm not sure if you can actually see them, but um, it's a nice solid table. Don't want to burn it. Alright, let's get this sucker up and running. Now, keep the current in the back. Put the duty cycle at full. And we'll turn it up till we hit. You hear it. You can also adjust the frequency. It doesn't like the low frequencies. You might hear it as I change it. 
You see the wire moving. That's as the frequency changes. Right. Uh, just adjust the current moving some more. There the wires starting to smoke. All the enamels kind of burning off it. And the wires actually getting red hot. Now we're going to hit the current limiter. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's getting red hot. We'll trigger it back to 10. It's basically acting like a heating element. Uh, we'll set it up at 10. And there you go. It won't go past 10 now. I'm going to adjust the duty cycle. It'll always hit that peak of 10. Or around 10. My table. My full table. Yep. I'll show you the, the problem with the MOSFETs and the load sharing. I'm not sure if you can see this. But uh, that MOSFET's at 100 and. Oh, actually. 106, that one's a 73, that one's a 47, and that one's a 35. So um, that's not good. That's the problem with sharing the load on the MOSFETs. If they're not set up properly, then you'll find one MOSFET's doing much more work than all the others, and that's really not good design. But, in this case, it was um, a manufacturer error, so uh, we'll have to be more aware of that with the production model.